Hey, what's up? This is Albert Einstein here. You want yourself a cool jacket. Maybe you want something timeless, easy to wear, stylish, but also with a degree of practicality, usability as well. Look no further than the bomber jacket. We're gonna go through in more detail, not just reasons why you need yourself a bomber jacket if you don't have one already, but some examples from my own wardrobe coming in at different price points and different brands and different styles as well, but also features or things to look out for and some example outfits showing just how versatile these things can be. So that means there's a lot to get through in this video. So let's get cracking. Number one, they're always in style. One of the big benefits of the bomber jacket is its resilience in modern fashion. Along with, you know, denim jeans and biker jackets, they've just been considered pretty cool for a pretty significant period of time, at least since mid 20th century. The bomber jacket has been in use since the 1920s, but it was really the 50s with the introduction of the MA1 that was really when civilians started picking that up. And that's due in part to the new nylon design and the overall slimmer shape, making it more appropriate for day-to-day -day wear. They also cut out the big collar of the previous model, the B15. But it was really from the 60s that the MA1 started being exported from contractors like Alpha Industries and Rothko to civilians and in fact into other Western markets. And over in Japan, you've got brands like Van Jacket who were taking inspiration from the American soldiers occupying the country at the time and making their own recreations of jackets like the MA1. That model is still by far the most popular today, even though some of that really popular media which helped to glamorize and reinforce the image of the bomber jacket wearing all American hero films like The Great Escape and Top Gun were interestingly not actually using the MA1. They had in those films the A2 and the B15 respectively. From punks and skinheads in the 70s to more recent reinventions by high fashion houses wishing to make a deliberately rebellious statement, these have been used in all kinds of different variations and by all kinds of different subcultures. It's quite a complex and quite a rich history of the MA1, definitely something that's worth looking into more if you're interested. But the upshot of that, the point, is that you're going to be able to pick one of these up and know that to an extent it's going to have some timeless appeal. It is still going to be cool years down the line. It's a wardrobe staple you know you can rely on and it's got a bit of cool history behind it too. And that brings us neatly on to reason number two. And that is simply the endless number of options and variations when it comes to bomber jackets. Every fashion brand in the world has got their own take on this from high fashion stuff to grungy rebellious items to really clean smart looking things, extremely luxurious expensive things, very entry level fast fashion cheap things and everything in between. Yes, even the jacket from Drive with a scorpion on the back. Whatever your preference or the way you like to dress, there will be a bomber jacket that leans in that direction, which is gonna be up your street. What's more is because of that atemporal nature, because the overall design and the shape of the MA1 has not really changed in a significant way since its inception, it means that you've got a real back catalog of things to choose from as well. From genuine vintage military surplus stuff to archival high fashion and everywhere in between. What kind of examples have I got though? Well, my most recent bomber jacket is this one right here. This is the Enfant Leve S Akita. They actually sent this to me much earlier in the year. So apologies that I've not really done anything on this sooner. Um, but basically it's it's been kind of too warm to wear for a lot of the season. But we're making up for it now. We'll be using this jacket as an example throughout the video, but this is a modern and a technical interpretation on the MA1 design. One of the big factors behind that is the traditionally knitted collar and cuffs. In this case, actually use the same material as the rest of the jacket. This is cotton stots here, and that gives it a much more uh, protective and high performance look overall. I also think because of the Prima Loft insulation in here, not only does that make it quite nice and warm and cozy, but it gives the jacket a little bit of bulk as well, and perhaps more so than many other modern interpretations of the bomber jacket. So this is kind of simultaneously looking forward with some of those design changes and back to the classic bulky insulated bomber design. And then we have the 11 by BBS version, which in many ways sits at the opposite end of the spectrum to the Esakita. You've got a much less structured, thin nylon face fabric here with the, yes, traditional knitted cuffs, but these ones are equipped with thumb holes, which is not only nice and cozy for your hands, but it gives it a very clearly rebellious and slightly grungy look. Very much fits in with that kind of long line, yeah, slightly destroyed, 
sportswear, athleisure kind of look. Very dark wear, Rick Owens kind of thing. And then at the affordable end of the spectrum, we have this Uniqlo bomber here, which has a very kind of clean look. It's got this nice high rounded collar, which I think makes it look quite smart compared to some of the other options. A little bit of insulation as well, quite comfortable face fabric, so quite nice and easy to wear. And this cost me something like 30 pounds, I think, when it came out. And that nice navy blue color, a little bit softer than black, making it feel quite kind of casual, quite relaxed. And yeah, as I say, super easy to put on and integrate with kind of menswear and just casual day-to-day -day stuff. Again, the overall silhouettes of bombers have not really changed. So those vintage options are gonna be just as relevant as the new stuff. And even within these three, you can see some quite significant differences and different aesthetics and styles that they can fit into whilst having those very clear common elements and them just being so recognizable as the MA1 or based on the MA1's design. The third great reason to own a bomber jacket is about features and utility because they don't just have to look good, they can actually do some stuff as well. And I think the Asakita is a great example example of that. Not only do you have a plethora of pockets on here, you've got ones for your hands, one of which is slightly bigger, so there's a little bit of options there. You've got an internal device pocket, and you've got this cool floating chest pocket too, which looks quite interesting, and it just gives you an extra bit of space to store things. But there's performance at the material level as well, with the Cotton Stots face fabric, the insulation as well, meaning you've got both some water resistance and some warmth, whilst being a little bit easier to move around in than a Gore-Tex jacket, for example. Of course, it's not going to be as well suited to wet weather simply because there's no hood on there, but at least if you get caught out it's going to help keep your body dry and it's going to be warmer for those winter months too. Inside there's also a jacket sling so if it gets a bit hot you can just wear it on your back instead. You've got the double zip plus the snap closure meaning quite a few different options to wear there and even looking at the cuffs they're nice and snug which is quite a common feature of MA1 jackets which is going to help keep that nice warmth on the inside where it belongs. So yeah, the Asakita presents quite a nice feature set as far as bombers go, definitely putting it over your typical jacket in that department. Interesting change though is the utility pocket, which is usually present on the left arm and very much a signature of the MA1, they've actually removed here, giving it a little bit of a modern interpretation, I suppose, and separating it a little bit from its military inspiration. The BBS bomber feels like less of a reinvention, but you've still got the nice thumb holes to keep your hands warm. You've still got the double zip and the snap closure combined to give you some different wear options there. And perhaps most importantly, you've got the reversible design, meaning you can switch between both a green version or a black version, depending on your preference. So you've really got two different wear options in one at least. Those two jackets alone give you a good idea of the kind of features you might find present in different bomber jackets and if there's something that you're really taken by then that might inform your decision of what kind of bomber jacket you might want to be looking for. Of course they're not going to be as fully featured as a Gore-Tex shell but it's a good way of dipping your toe and getting a little bit of technical functionality or some cool utility there without having to go maximum tech ninja all the time. And that brings us very nicely onto our fourth point, which is the bomber jacket is extremely easy to style. The military inspiration of the bomber jacket, the utilitarian features and design it presents, and the fact that you may well associate this with a kind of science fiction protagonist. Take, for example, Case Pollard from William Gibson's novels, who famously wears a Buzz Rickson MA1, makes it a super easy choice to pair up with tech wear clothing and the more technical, performance-focused stuff. So you can see an example of that really leaning into the future military kind of look, quite intimidating, quite performance focused, and I think there's a certain element of science fiction in this kind of thing as well. But that's certainly, by all means, not the only route that you have to go down in styling this kind of thing. Bombers alone don't really have the unmistakable technical styling of a waterproof shell, and I think they're worn so much that that original military connotation has really been stripped away to a certain extent. So as a result, you can wear this with almost anything and get away with it. You can strip this outfit right back, take a very plain t-shirt, pair of pants, and you'll still probably find that a bomber jacket is going to fit in here very nicely. Since they're commonly found in nice easy to wear colours like black and green and navy, you'll find from a colour perspective as well they can slot in quite easily with what you happen to be wearing. They're not really going to restrict you in that department. Even with different levels of smartness, you'll still find bomber jackets worn in that more kind of hashtag menswear, male fashion advice kind of style where they might be paired up with shirt and a pair of chinos even. 
You will find a reason to wear one, there's no question about that. And often I find that you can just pick whatever you want to wear and then decide at the end, oh, it's actually a little bit cold, think I'll put a bomber jacket over the top and it still just looks fine. You don't have to spend hours meticulously crafting a bomber jacket based outfit in the lab before you go outside to the shops. That also means if your style changes over time, the bomber jacket is more likely to make the cut and still be useful over that transition period. Take that Uniqlo jacket for example, it's still there chilling in my wardrobe even though I bought it five plus years ago and I dress very differently now to how I did then. It's just a very easy casual piece of clothing to put on, I just need something extra over the top. I think this outfit kind of shows that it's very effortless, it's very casual, it feels like something you could wear in the summer but then with the addition of the bomber makes it more suitable for winter weather. So long as it doesn't rain or else you're going to have to bust out the umbrella hat. It all seems pretty solid for the bomber jacket. I think there's a lot of reasons to like them. I've certainly been bigging them up over the course of this video. Are there any potential downsides though? Something we kind of touched on already is that these are not as appropriate for all conditions as some other styles of jacket. The lack of hood means that if you're planning on going out in the rain, this of course is not going to be the best choice. It's a much more casual option than a Gore-Tex or a winter shell. And while some jackets like the Esakita are relatively full featured, and while the MA1 was originally created, of course, with a lot of utility and functionality in mind, those uses and those functions are not quite as relevant now your average person isn't piloting jets, and some of those things have just been removed entirely in favour of aesthetics or cost cutting. The other thing is something that Christian from Frugal Aesthetic mentioned in his recent video about different kinds of jackets, which was pretty funny and you should definitely watch it. They do have a bit of a perception of being a little bit middle of the road or maybe not super interesting and it's partly because of those advantages because there are so many different ones because they're so easily available especially from like the cheaper brands and fast fashion and stuff and because they are just so easy to wear in style it means that almost anyone can wear a bomber jacket regardless of their level of interest in fashion. For some people that kind of poisons the well that so many people that maybe don't care about fashion at all are still buying and wearing those Alpha Industries bomber jackets for example. But I think that's all the more reason to have a look at the breadth of different things available in this space. To give an example, look at the Alpha Industries and Ada Era recent collab that just came out. This is clearly still based on the MA1 design, but with a, a real twist on that that very much makes it a statement piece. You're not going to see your average person wearing something like this, and yet there is still that very clear aesthetic connection to the original MA1. It's a great mix of the conventional and the distinctive, and I think it keeps a lot of the advantages of the typical MA1 bomber jacket. Like, I still don't think something like this would be really difficult to style. You could just wear this over a relatively simple thing, and it's still going to fit in well and look good. But it doesn't look middle of the road by all means, this is absolutely going to catch some attention and make you look different to other people out there. It breaks out of that basic mould I think, and to an extent the Esakita and the BBS are both kind of reinventions of the MA1 in their own ways, which will help achieve that goal too. Those are my thoughts and feelings on the bomber jacket and specifically the MA1, something that I think makes a great wardrobe staple, but has been a little bit underrepresented on this channel, I've not really talked about them too much, despite actually liking them quite a lot. Again, thanks to Anton Levy for sending the Esakita. I think it's a great example of what a modern interpretation of a bomber jacket can be. Something that does some things different while still having that clearly heritage inspired design. And of course, there's loads of other cool options out there too. So if you've got anything in particular that you really like the look of, either that you own and you love, or that you've just seen recently and you happen to like, like that Ada era option that I showed before, then definitely stick that down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like because it is super appreciated appreciated and as always we will catch you next week with another one. I'm on the warpath with making videos right now again this one is being recorded before last week's is out um, so yeah what I really want to try and do is get a little bit of extra content out there so maybe next week or the week after we'll see a little cheeky midweek video release um, yeah I'm just I feel like there's a lot of stuff that's really cool and interesting going on right now and I want to do my best to get that out there into the interwebs. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to catch some more, there's going to be links going up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then I don't know what you're playing at because there's going to be more stuff every week. You already know, but if you haven't, then subscribe and you'll find out.